hello everyone. Thank you for such a warm welcome. We didn't expect such a packed room and there's still people coming in. So we are here for talking about the dashboard initiative. This is something that we kicked off like maybe eight months ago. So the session is called, so I logged in, now what? The dashboard initiative. And we are, I'm Christian Lopez, I'm Peñasquito on Drupal.org. I work as a freelancer and I come from Seville, Spain. And here we have. And I'm Cristina uh, Chumillas, I uh, work for Lulabot. Uh, you can find me on Secrina or Lulabot, uh, sorry, uh, Drupal.org. And I'm a front-end developer and usability maintainer, core maintainer, and um, provisional co uh, front-end core uh, framework, fr front framework manager. Okay, so let's start. Yeah, we are trying again to have a dashboard in core. Yeah. For those of you as me as, well, actually it happened before, I actually started, or even I didn't know that it happened before, until I actually tried to do that. So, Drupal 7. There was this attempt. Um, there wasn't uh, no customization by default. Uh, it was the same thing for site builders, for content editors. It basically provided a dashboard page in the administrative interface. and. Um, that was it. Uh, you could see who was new, which is super important, uh, who's online. And at the beginning, it all made sense. And probably the idea was actually to come up with a, with a lot of things and people would provide its own things. But actually, the reality, and I don't want to destroy people's work on the past because it actually was a really good idea. But the problem is that for whatever reason, it didn't end up like the way uh, we wanted. And even a lot of people created ways to actually disable it by default. <laughs> yeah, it's just somebody told me that it still exists. Anyway, so, uh, and I'm gonna just say that it, it's not good to say uh, bad things about uh, what happened in the past because the, uh, the effort got really good. So um, the thing is that if we, we didn't want to fall in the same problem that actually people would dis disable what we were doing, um, we needed to figure out which were uh, the problems that we wanted to solve for people. And one of the first problems is that, come on, you log in and you're redirected to slash um, user. Hi, you've been a part of this site for two seconds, like, ooh. So, um, okay, so if we actually change that, what are we going to do? Yeah, great idea, let's move, uh, let's redirect people to admin slash content. And actually the, this would work for, for content editors, but it might not be suitable for like administrators or site builders, so it wouldn't be useful actually. So, um, Okay, I stepped in, well, you're redirected to the user. And basically uh, the problem that we are trying to solve is um, different uh, for each user. Each user will want to start on a completely different uh, point and they will actually have completely different tasks that they want to achieve. So there isn't, uh, no, there's any centralized place that gather, gathers uh, most of the user tasks for per each users. So um, what if you want to go to, uh, for example, slash admin? Uh, there is nothing there for most of the people neither. So um, seeing relevant content uh, for um, users that actually want to see content, even that uh, needs uh, several steps. For example, uh, if you want to uh, see uh, the content that has been uh, edited by a specific user, your own uh, content, for example. What if you want to see uh, content that is not published? Probably that default uh, experience is not going to solve that. 
There also isn't a place for uh, side-quite commu side communications. Um, what if we want to say there is going to be a maintain maintenance um, happening at some point in the day or next week or please stop sharing whatever. I don't know, there isn't a way like where we can actually uh, communicate to all users. So, well, together with all these questions, um, the bigger question was like, which is the content that we have to, to have in there? If we want to have a dashboard, which things, which things are we actually going to give? Um, and we've actually been working on that and we would love your feedback, but this is going to come after. We started um, the work to get there, uh, defining user personas. Um, we needed to define what people want to see and uh, which kind of content, which kind of blogs, and for whom, like which thing each user wanted to see. So historically, the user, um, the admin interface for Drupal has been for site builders. And there hasn't been that many things uh, only focused for um, content authors, for example. And actually, Drupal gives a lot of flexibility uh, to do stuff for content authors. It's just that most of us actually don't customize the site for the final users, for the content editors, content managers, or whatever, content related. So um, we came up with these four main uh, personas. Um, the administrator, site administrator will be one of the personas, the site builder will be the other one, and then we have the content editor and the content manager. And we actually needed, it, needed to find which um, tasks uh, would solve the 80% of cases, because as, you, as we know, uh, each Drupal site is a completely different story. But um, as you might know, we have the page, uh, basic page on all sites or the article uh, content type on all, on all pages, uh, on all sites. So we might disable that, but at least this gives some clues to people. So we need to come up with this 80% of cases and then people uh, can decide what, if that's good enough for them or not. We started doing that uh, by defining the, what actually moved people inside the interface. We did that for each of the four user personas. Uh, for the site builder, the, for the site builder, we started to say um, defining the behaviors, motivations, frustrations. Um, we did that for each of them. It's not that much uh, that important. Each of them like being perfect. In here, we basically wanted to see what they would actually need, and that actually took us to a place where we saw that it's not, um, it's not that much about users, what would um, group them into different places. It actually was the tasks that they attempted to do or they were actually trying to do when they logged in a Drupal page. So that's the thing that actually uh, make the difference between site administrators or maybe site builders compared to uh, content authors or content, any content related user. So this is the, the initial idea that uh, we came up This, What you're seeing here is uh, for the MVP that we're thinking. We are not defining uh, stuff for after the MVP. And this is actually thinking about the 80% of cases and not thinking with um, country modules that uh, for example, could be um, Google Tag Manager, which is not analytics, it's Tag Manager now. So these kind of things are CEO related models or whatever. So this would be the basic uh, things that this, each of the uh, dashboards would actually solve for each of them. So uh, this is actually happening. Uh, not as an as isolated thing. Uh, we are trying to improve uh, the administration uh, itself, how the usability, trying to make the usability better for the whole administration. So several things that actually uh, we're going to make um, 
the administration itself uh, better were happening at the same time. So like, for example, the user personas is something that has been used on several of the initiatives that you've seen today. Uh, there is no doors of other things that are among here. And I think that's your turn. So now about the technical implementation. So we've been working uh, on this for, for some months and we discover some stuff in the process. So first, uh, something that we want to do is having like progressive enhancement, like you would think about the, the front end where if a browser has some capabil capabilities, uh, you can provide further functionality. So this is somehow the same, like we want to provide some way that you can have uh, useful blocks for your different user personas on your Drupal site. But maybe if, I don't know, Layout Builder is installed, then you allow people to customize them or something like that. If there are some <coughs> modules that are providing blocks that you can place on the dashboard, you can, you can use them for your users. So basically a dashboard will be or is just a config entity. We found out uh, there's also some validation of the problem. Like we've seen there's some th stuff happening on country space for this. Like I, um, we found there's a dash dashboards module uh, on Drupal on Drupal Dev Days Vienna. We did this talk and there was uh, the author of the content planner module. And he told us that we are providing dashboards to on the content planner model. So it's a, a problem that it's already validated. It's something that we really want to solve. Uh, so a dashboard will be a, just a config entity. And <coughs> one of the reasons is because it makes sense. But another one is that we want to provide a way for people that might be using these models to upgrade to the core uh, initiative one. So we started with a, a config entity that can store references to blocks using Layout Builder. Then we figure out, as you saw on the this note, that there are a lot of uh, movement in terms of the UI of Layout Builder. Uh, there was this um, pitch work where Gutenberg was getting some funding and it might replace Layout Builder. So we decided that we should try to be agnostic about what we use. So we will provide uh, some way to be defined uh, about how you p pick and place those blocks. But if Layout Builder is installed, you will be able to customize your dashboard uh, as you would do with uh, any content template uh, another thing, so initially this idea was about having role-based dashboard. Uh, but we've, in the process of working on this, we figured out that people usually wear, wear different hats and perform different roles. So at the end, we want to give roles permissions for different dashboards. But I might have, like, I, in my personal side, I'm probably a content author. I'm the content moderator. I'm the content translator. And I'm the site builder. So I would wear all of those, these hats. Um, in some other sites, you might have uh, different, different permissions or different dashboards. So we want to provide some defaults for the standard profile in Drupal core, but we also want to allow people to custom, customize this for, for the users. Uh, so yeah, we will have uh, uh, some permissions, uh, administer dashboards, which allows you to create or edit or delete dashboards. Probably we will make this more granular at the end. And then if I can access a given dashboard, and because on the standard profile we have uh, two user roles, uh, the administrator and the content manager that somehow unifies content editor and content manager. Uh, we will have these two default dashboards. So uh, when I log in on my site, 
I will go to a dashboard. And which dashboard sh should I see first? People probably want to customize that, so they, they will be defined by weight. Uh, because yeah, f first at first we tried to to do that, but by, by, by role, but it didn't really make sense. So we will have like the standard builder list builder that you know from Drupal, where you can see all the dashboards you can edit. And because I have layout builder here, there there is uh, an edit layout operation, so I can edit my my dashboard. <coughs> and I can reorder them, drag them around, and, and reorder them. So, yeah, so one thing that it was really hard is finding and, and doing some research on what should be the core defaults for the standard profile. Probably at the future we will look at Umami, maybe, and what should be the roles in Umami so we can demo how you would expand this for your own site. Uh, yeah, so defining what and f for which kind of users. Yeah, so th this is uh, a screenshot for, yeah, excuse my French and my front-end skills. Uh, but yeah, so this, this would be like a default dashboard for a content manager, for, sorry, for a site builder or site admin, they can see the recent comments. Maybe it doesn't fit here, but this, we didn't have defined all the blocks that we actually wanted to have here. So you would have like blocks, like recent comments, recent content, uh, your own drafts, uh, some admin stuff like clear the cache. I can run cron here manually. So uh, yeah, basically, you could think that at the end we might want to split like the typical admin reports status page, convert everything into blocks, so you can actually place the blocks that might make sense for you here. And for a content uh, manager, you would see my own drafts, uh, yeah, content related ones, comments, who was the last user that registered, who is online, this kind of stuff. A problem that we found is defining what is available uh, in terms of which blocks would make sense for, for a dashboard. And there's a, already an existing user issue on Layout Builder, like the list of available blocks is overwhelming to users. So I think that this is for the content templates, I think. So it, it, it was based on the content templates. So when you create your article and you decide that you can customize that with Layout Builder, it provides a lot of blocks and you can add your custom inline blocks. So now we are adding the Layout Build, the um, dashboards, and the dashboards will probably, like, if we succeed, we, people will make a lot of blocks. So this list will be even bigger, and not only for the content, but also for the dashboards themselves. So we need to figure out um, how to work with the layout builder team on a solution for this. And this is something that we didn't define yet. Um, we thought about having like our own Layout builder block that extends blocks, but then we would need to use that in views. So that means that the blocks, the views blocks that you already have, you will need to duplicate them for the dashboard if you want to reuse them. It's like a lot of burden for 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 administrators or editors or people who is customizing the the dashboards. If you have your own blocks in code and you have to extend a specific class like this will probably make harder people to expose stuff to the dashboard which i think in some way is what made this solution not work in drupal 7 like if people really need to think 
on the dashboard for providing blocks, maybe they don't. And if there are no content that you can place, maybe the dashboard will die before even getting into core. So this is something that we have to take into account, but yeah, we, we, we still didn't reach a conclusion. By now we are just using regular blocks and uh, we will figure out how we solve this problem together with uh, the layout builder people. We, we, we hope to have some conversations here at DrupalCon. And if you have opinions on that, yeah, we can use the Q&A and, and we will be at the sprint rooms during, during the week, especially on, the, on Friday for, all, for the full day. So we will welcome all of you. So yeah, uh, we welcome you. Uh, we plan some, some issues to work uh, for the sprints. We are in the dashboard channel in Slack, and we have uh, already tagged uh, some issues on the issue queue. So we welcome you there. And yeah, we want to thank uh, a lot of people that already participated here uh, on the initiative, and we, we are really hoping to, to put your name here to, to find, out, find us uh, at the sprints. Uh, yep. So that's it. Do you have questions or suggestions? Thank you. So I was curious, the... So go ahead. Okay, uh, the home box module is what Drupal.org uses. <clears throat> so can you, can you repeat that? Yeah, there's, there's a home box module that Drupal.org uses to allow sort of like per user configurable dashboards. Is there a, a maybe like a further out thought that the dashboards initiative might include that kind of more like per user as opposed to per role? Uh, we had this conversation at the very beginning, and we had a very hard no at the beginning on the MVP, especially, because uh, most of the time, uh, the complexity that Drupal has, it's already too much. Like, to add that, we are used to, uh, as a developers or people that actually have been using Drupal for years, to know what we want. But for most of the people, it's not usually the main thing. So uh, as an MVP, no, and we expect if we get that into core, probably it's going to be like an extended thing on country or something like that. So that's not on the roadmap. So uh, as she said, it's not for the MVP, but we are having that in mind. Like uh, with content, you could have uh, your articles template and then for note four, you can customize that. So what we are using would allow to do that in Contrib. So we are not providing that, but we are thinking about it for the future. Thank you for the question. Any more questions? I would love to add that we've been working uh, on the content that we uh, mentioned. Uh, we created uh, issues for each of the blocks. And we will need hands during the contribution day uh, and they are ready to be worked on. So if anybody wants to help on that, uh, we will be around on Friday for sure. And those issues are already there. So uh, we have work. And if you Friday. never contributed to Drupal before, these I think are very affordable tasks in terms that they are very self-constrained. And maybe it's like some of the blocks you could do it with views and yes, export the config and provide a patch with the config. So it's a, if you never contributed to Drupal before, I think it's a, a good first experience. Uh, thank you guys. Um, my name's Dane. I'm just curious how much 
uh, inspiration is your team taking from other platforms? Because some other CMSs and especially e-commerce platforms, some of them have really, really great dashboards out the box. You install them. They have like some informational charts, although that doesn't really make sense when you first install because you don't have information to have charts or, or views of. But they have, you know, next actions and, and some information and even community news and things like that. So, yeah, I'm just curious how much inspiration we're getting from other platforms. A lot. <laughs> A lot. I mean, uh, actually, the module is basically not just built already because it's not everything is done. But we ended up with the list that you just see there like we finished that list two weeks ago meaning that we've been doing a lot of research things uh, are on here and, and Meg that wasn't able to come uh, it's taken ages actually to review uh, what other people do and the most uh, not problematic but the, the thing that we wanted to do is to be sure that um, whatever we provide people actually might not use it because as you were saying like for e-commerce doesn't what makes sense most of the time, whatever we do. And that's why we ended up uh, into the conclusion that um, dashboards shouldn't be per role, but per task, because uh, then if you want to have a dashboard just for the commerce of, or if a distribution wants to have its own dashboard uh, as a config entity and provide that with the distribution itself, it's going to be their dashboard maintained by them, but it's something that Drupal, uh, that Drupal core will provide. So our idea uh, all the time in our head was like trying to lay the base uh, for other people to work on top of that. So no e-commerce yet on core, but... <laughs> Thank you. Um, so since you've done all this research looking at other systems that have dashboards, have you learned anything about the actual dashboard blocks or content that they're creating where you would look at as like good guidelines for people who might be thinking ahead to like, how do I build the blocks that might fit into this later or any common anti-patterns that you observed where you're like, you know, these systems do this in their blocks and we really would encourage the community not to create blocks and contrib that follow these patterns. So when you say, say other tools, you mean other uh, frameworks? Yeah, you were saying that you looked at a bunch of uh, e-commerce platforms and, uh, as for inspiration. So like, I'm curious like, if you have any you know, lessons or takeaways from like, how they put, put them out. Yeah, I have no idea about the, how they actually, and we, uh, on the content side, we research what was in there, not how they actually build that, but I'm not sure if you have. Yeah, we didn't take a look on how they technically build that because I'm not oh, talking no, about e-commerce. I mean from the content side. That's what I'm like, like what makes a good dashboard block and what makes a bad dashboard block? That's a yeah, that's a really good question. But the, the thing is that it depends for the person that has that that the task that the person wants to do like what's the goal for that person i want to log in and and see how many new uh orders they have then that's going to be a task for whoever is going to do that so that's a dashboard that it's going to be dedicated to that and we can't provide that in core and go down Hold on yeah the thing is that we are really restrained with what is in core in terms of the models enabled by default and this yeah. kind of stuff like for the standard profile, we are quite uh, constrained. But for example, Gabor did uh, gave a lot of feedback uh, in Vienna about how to make those like very visual. Like you can see yeah. a lot of information on a first chance instead of like having just boxes of listing of contents. So, yeah, as I was saying before, this is integrated with all the other things on the admin uh, UI or I admin mean, UI changes. One of the things that will happen in there, uh, it's actually we're trying to redesign uh, a lot of things. Like uh, part of the navigation itself, we want to change the layout uh, of uh, the admin interface and change several things. And that includes a redesign of several things and dashboard 
is in there. So the new designs are going to land at some point, but we don't have that done yet. Are you speaking about the Admin UX initiative by chance this week? Maybe you want to <laughs> do some spam here? I, well, yeah, there is going to be a Thursday, another session I'm going to give. I didn't want to self-promote. Yeah, I'll, I'll okay. do it for you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, there is an, another session about uh, admin UX change and admin UI changes that we are uh, uh, proposing. Uh, she was before. Sorry, I can just. Th thanks, and this is not so much a question but more a comment because I really like the way you're now starting to think of tasks rather than of roles and permissions. Because I probably we have all seen these sites where you end up with 27,000 roles, and in the end, nobody knows anymore which role is where, and everybody gets every permission. Um, and you basically build a site that becomes insecure because you're giving the basic content editor the, the right to destroy the whole site, um, because you need to give them the block layout permissions and all of that kind of palaver. So, so I think the idea of thinking tasks will also make it easier for site builders afterwards to say how do we structure who needs to have what role. And I think that would be a really good step forward also to the usability of the site afterwards. So thank you very much for that approach. Thanks. Well, actually one of the things that we were thinking about is uh, trying to um, have, for example, content users actually having available another dashboard that could be CEO or like Google Analytics, no, uh, Google Tag Manager, whatever. So you needed like several of them. So my question is actually, if we are doing this, why don't we step, uh, take a step back and Core will just provide us with a dashboard that then we can write plugins for so that if my module is providing something that I then need to put on a dashboard for either admin or for somebody else, I will, as a module developer, also write a plugin or something or a block or something that will then be available for that dashboard. Instead of instead of thinking this just as something, so we can so if we do that, we can have uh, because you were you were just saying that you know if we have commerce, it's hard to have commerce because it's not part of the core. It's hard to have commerce dashboard entities within uh, the dashboard. But if we just make it a pluginable thing, yeah, it, it is. Really doesn't matter. You know, if it's core or not, I mean, it's just dashboard. You will have tasks yeah. based on based on roles. The, the, there are two different things here. One is providing something so people can build dashboards, mm -hmm. and then we we can achieve that. And the second one is what should be the default for the standard profile which we have in core. So what you are saying is that you want people to be able to be able to provide blocks that they can plus place in the dashboard we can do that as well as well as having you know the just the standard one that comes out of the box yeah i mean if you yeah so if you install install standard you will have that if you uh, like a module can provide a config entity so it could mm. provide a different dashboard or it could provide blocks that you can place on your dashboard. Maybe you cannot provide, uh, like you cannot alter an existing dashboard because maybe you don't know the roles that I already have on my site or the dashboards that I already have on my site because maybe I customized that already. But the idea is that, yeah, you can provide blocks and so people can customize that and I can think that maybe commerce could provide like their default dashboards. Like I have a commerce manager or I have an uh, order manager or I have uh, the accountability that uh, checks if I got the payments or if I need to check the manual payments or something like that. So, yeah. So the idea is that we are providing a way to provide those blocks for Contrib that right now is just a regular block. So you will just provide a regular block. It might be a specialized block in the future. We need to work on that yet, but but yeah, that that's something that we part of the problem that we want to solve. 
think it's time, right? We're over time. Or just to, hi, just, just to add one thing. Hi, I'm Aaron. Um, one of the things that we, that I think, because there's a couple of things touched on it that could be really powerful is when uh, recipes combine with dashboards. So as a site, because dashboards are config, you could like provide a recipe that has a dashboard or like, you know, if Google Analytics, for instance, provides blocks and if we, you know, graphs came up as one thing, maybe that's something we should talk about as like, you know, what's the standard for like providing graphs for dashboards. So some things there I think we can, we can think about for sure. Thank you.